And thank you, Stuart, and can I add in your warm welcome to all of those gathered here today. I'm delighted as well to welcome our Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, on his first visit to London as Secretary General, leading the multilateral work around the world. I'm sure this will be the first of many visits as we work together under your leadership to build an ever stronger partnership between the UK and the United Nations. It's a partnership that came into being more than 70 years ago. The people of this country had just experienced conflict firsthand. My parents' generation knew what it meant. On this very day, 76 years ago, just yards from where I'm standing, incendiary bombs fell on the Palace of Westminster, setting it ablaze. The House of Commons chamber was destroyed. The very heart of our democracy was reduced to rubble. Many people across the world experienced the horrors of conflict. Like us, they were determined to prevent it from ever happening again. That's why from the ashes of war, the United Nations was born. It was London that played host, as Stuart has just mentioned, it was London that plays host to the first meeting of the United Nations General Assembly in this very hall indeed. And a week later, the very first meeting of the UN Security Council took place just across the road in Church House. Think of that as you leave here today. What a core part was played by London in the peace process. Secretary General, I really can't think of a more fitting venue for your first speech in this country as head of our United Nations. Those first meetings demonstrated the UK's early commitment to the United Nations, and it's a commitment that remains steadfast today across all the political parties of this country. You can see it in our contribution to the UN mission in South Sudan, with more British peacekeepers arriving just this month. You can see it in our leadership on some of the toughest issues facing the Security Council today, including Somalia, which we will discuss tomorrow. And you can see it in the spend of 0.7% of gross national income on overseas development. I'm proud that our commitment to the United Nations has never wavered. Today, the challenges the UN faces have indeed never been greater. Threats are emerging in ways that the UN's founders could never have imagined from non-state actors, violent extremism, climate change. As the nature of the threats change, so too must the United Nations response. We have tools at our disposal that our predecessors never had. Tools for conflict prevention, mediation, stabilization, tools to prevent violent extremism, to avert famine, to accelerate development, and to achieve the global goals. It's vital that the United Nations makes effective use of these tools to address the challenges of today and beyond. To do this, it does need to change. That's why I'm delighted that the Secretary General is committed to reforming the organization. He wants to see a United Nations that represents the world as it is now not how it used to be. A UN where gender parity is a reality, not an aspiration. A UN which could prevent crises as well as ending them. And we warmly welcome the Secretary General's early focus on development and humanitarian reform so that the UN can respond effectively to the crises in the Lake Chad Basin, Somalia, South Sudan, Yemen, we share his commitment to reforming the UN's work on peace and security with greater emphasis on conflict prevention and on counter-terrorism. And we agree that for all of this to succeed, the UN's management needs to be reformed. That means a simpler organisation, more nimble, less centralised, an organisation that can respond efficiently and effectively to all the challenges it faces. An organisation focused on people, not process. Committed to delivery, not held back by bureaucracy. 
For these reforms to be successful, the Secretary-General will need the full backing of all Member States, UN officials, and crucially, all of us, every single one of us here today. Secretary-General, I can assure you that for our part, the United Kingdom will give you our wholehearted support. Today, as we did 70 years ago, our support will not waver. Thank you.